Hi guys, in today's video we're going to be painting a miniature for the absolute beginner. But first of all I want to say a huge thank you to Goblin Gaming who sent me the box sets out for review. If you check the description box down below you'll find a direct link to Goblin Gaming's web store and you can go and check them out for yourselves. Also the link's really important to follow if you want to purchase anything from Goblin Gaming as it directly helps my YouTube channel. Ok guys, so I'm going to go over some of the products that we need for this tutorial. First of all, it's important to get yourself some miniatures. The miniatures that we're going to be using today is the Death Guard starter set of miniatures which comes in a box set of three which you can pick up from Goblin Gaming for just £8. Also, you won't see it on the table at the moment but we'll also be needing some Corax White Spray. That's to prime the miniature which we'll show you shortly. We also need to buy some paints. Now the paints that we're going to be using is going to be from the Death Guard paint set, again the, which can be got from Goblin Gaming for just over £8. It also comes with a starter paint brush. As you can see the set comes with 6 paints and all these 6 paints and the paint brush are going to be important for this tutorial. I do however recommend that you pick up one of Games Workshop's layer brushes or base brushes instead of the starter brush as it's not the best brush to use to be quite honest but you can still use it for this tutorial. It's important to have two water sources guys. One water source is going to be used for the metallic paints and the other source is going to be used for the standard paints. The reason for this is that if we actually use the metallic paints to clean our brush in the same pot as the standard paints, those metal particles will contaminate the other paints and it will leave an uneven and spoil the look of the miniature. I'm also using an old paint pot guys that's stuck down with a bit of blue tack or white tack if you like. The reason for this is that it's much easier to hold the miniature in your hand if it's actually on a base. If you're actually holding just the miniature itself you can easily get cramp in your fingers as the way that you hold the miniature is not very comfortable and you can also risk getting paint on your fingers and then spoiling the look of the miniature as you place your fingers on the miniature. So I highly recommend that you place the miniature on a base that you can hold in your hand so you don't have to physically hold the miniature with your fingers. Also we need to use a palette. I'm using some plastic sheet. Also we need some kitchen roll as well guys. The reason we're using this is just to wipe off the excess paint once we've cleaned our brush out in the water. We've covered everything we need, let's get started with the tutorial. It's important to prime the miniature guys. The reason we do this is it's going to leave a nice smooth matte surface for the paints to adhere to when we start painting in a little while. It's really important that you follow the instructions of the Games Workshop Corax Wide Spray which means that we've got to shake the can for at least two minutes before we start priming. I've shaken the can for two minutes now guys and here you can see that I'm priming. I'm pressing down very lightly on the nozzle cap and I'm making sure that I only spray intermittently all around the miniature. If you keep your finger held down on the nozzle cap you'll find that you'll actually obscure all of that lovely detail on the miniature by placing too much paint on the miniature. Also guys, when spraying the miniature, change the angle of the miniature and make sure that you're hitting it from all angles to make sure that the miniature is fully covered in the primer. So just to recap guys, make sure you shake the can for at least two minutes to make sure that the paint's thoroughly mixed with the propellant in the can and make sure that you spray intermittently and don't keep your finger held down on the button and you should end up with results like this where the miniature's fully primed and none of that lovely detail has been taken away. The first colour we're going to use is Death Guard Green. It's important that we shake the paints before we start to use them guys and mix them thoroughly.
The reason we use a pallet guys is we can thin the paints down and the reason we thin the paints down is that they'll go on nice and smooth and easily on the miniature more so than if you didn't thin them and also if you don't thin the paints it can obscure some of that lovely detail and leave brush stroke marks behind. So thinning the paints down just a little with some water will help the paint go nice and smoothly on the miniature and it won't obscure any of that lovely detail that's on the miniature. It will take two layers to build up a nice even coat of the Death Guard Green. But it's much better to paint in thin layers guys than it is on one thick paint layer so always thin your paints with a little water. Here you can see that I'm placing a little bit of paint on the tip of the bristles of the brush but I'm making sure that they don't go towards the bottom of the bristles up to the metal part of the brush which is called the ferrule. If the paint goes all the way down to the bottom of the bristles you can risk ruining the brush as paint dries and splits the ends of the bristles so always make sure that you only dip the very end of the bristles of the brush in the paint. When I'm holding the miniature with my hand that I'm painting with I actually brace it against my other hand with my little finger and this helps to steady my hand when I'm painting. If my hand was free it'd be able to move around really easily and you could possibly get the paint in an area that you don't want it. So if you actually hold your hand against your other hand and brace it you'll be able to get more accurate details with your paintbrush. Try to be as neat as you can applying the Death Guard green to the armour of the Death Guard Marine. But don't worry too much if it goes over some of the areas that will be painted in different colours later on as the coverage of these paints are pretty good and we'll be able to cover up any mistakes that we've made. And this is what the Death Guard miniature looks like when we've painted all of the Death Guard green on the miniature. As you can see it's a nice smooth even coverage that I've done in two layers. Next we're going to be painting all of the bone areas on the miniature using Rakar flesh and also there's some rope around the gun and also all of the tentacles that are on the miniature. Now we're going to start painting all the bone, tentacles and rope and the cloth on the Death Guard Marine using Rakar flesh. Here you can see that I'm rolling the bristles of the brush into a nice sharp point just to get as much control over the brush as I possibly can. And as you can see, the Rakar flesh covers over the white nice and lovely.
and here we can see that we've painted all the areas with Rakar flesh. So that includes all the bone, all the tentacles, the cloth and the rope on the miniature. Next we're going to start using lead voucher on the miniature and as I mentioned at the start of the video it's important to shake your paints but it's even more so important to shake the paints of metallics as they can separate quite easily in the pots. The areas that we're going to paint using the lead voucher paint are going to be the grenade on the side of the leg, also the gun, the round spheres on the backpack and the backpack exhaust vents. Again it's important to note guys that I've thinned down the paint with a little bit of water on the palette again just to make sure the paint goes down nice and smoothly and it doesn't obscure any of that lovely detail. Here we can see what the miniature looks like after painting all of the areas that need to be painted in lead voucher. The next paint we're going to use is Balthazar Gold and we're going to be painting all of the trim around the Death Guard miniature and some little areas of details like skulls on the grenade and tiny little areas of detail. Here you'll see that I'm being very careful just to catch the edges of the armour where I need to place the Balthazar Gold. I'm actually coming at a slight angle with a brush and not coming in from the top as it would be easier to catch the miniature and paint over that lovely Death Guard green that we've already laid down. Again I've rolled the bristles of the brush into a nice sharp point on the palette and this enables me to just paint using a very very fine tip on the brush. Now you can see that the miniature has been painted using Balthazar Gold on all the trim of the Death Guard miniature. Now we're going to use some Armageddon Dust on the base just to make it look like Earth. The Armageddon Dust is a texture paint and it has little grit inside the paint this is going to leave a really nice texture behind which will leave a nice organic earth feel to the base. Now we've been painted the entirety of the miniature it's important to let it thoroughly dry. I'm going to leave it for about half an hour to make sure that especially the Armageddon dust is dry because it's quite a thick paint and then we can wash it with Agrax Earth Shade. The Agrax Earth Shade is unlike the other paints as it's really really thin and watery. This is designed specifically to be washed into all the cracks and crevices of the miniature to create shade. It's going to leave some really nice details behind that pop out from the miniature. So this is what's going to really start to bring the miniature to life. And here you can see that I'm starting to apply the Agrax Earth Shade to the entirety of the miniature, including the base. I make sure that the Agrax Earth Shade is placed evenly over the miniature and I don't let it pull too much in the recesses. And here we can see what the miniature looks like after the whole of it has been painted using Agrax Earth Shade. As you can see it's really made those details pop out and made the metallics look a little bit more realistic. The last thing we need to do is paint the edge of the base and we're going to be coming back in with Death Guard Green to paint the edge of the base just to tidy up the miniature. 
here you'll see I'm using the side of the mud brush rules to make sure that I don't get any of that death guard green onto that lovely painted base that we've already done. And here we have our finished Death Guard miniature. And as you can see, it looks absolutely fantastic. But we can take this a stage further. So what we'll be doing in the next video, guys, is we'll be adding some extra colours and making the miniature come to life even more. So I really hope you've enjoyed this video. Please hit the like button if you have. But most importantly, share it amongst friends, share it on forums, share it with anyone you, you think wants to get involved into painting miniatures. As I really think that painting miniatures is such a fun and great hobby and it's something I've been enjoying for many years and I hope other people start to enjoy the hobby themselves. Lastly, I want to say a huge thank you once again to my YouTube channel sponsors Goblin Gaming. Please don't forget to check the description box down below. And thank you very much for watching guys and I'll catch you in the next video.